the top six on your screen. At number two is Notre Dame, their highest initial ranking. Clemson in at number three. No team initially ranked third has ever made the playoff. And then rounding out the in teams are the Buckeyes. You see Texas A&M and Florida sitting there on the outside. Again, these the very first of the rankings. There will be more. Let me bring the crew in here for our initial reaction and so much to talk about as we look at it here and tell me who do I have ready to go. Heather is there. I know Paul is there and we're waiting for Desmond Howard. He'll be with us like the in just a moment. And there he is. Des is ready to go as well. Good morning, Des. Uh, Des. But Heather, let me start with you. As you watched it all <laughs> unfold last night, what was your number one takeaway? What's the most important thing fans should have taken out of last night? Well, strength of schedule sank BYU like a rock to number 14. And this is important because not only was it very clear that they are out of the college football playoff conversation, they're not even in the New Year's Six Bowl conversation when they're at number 14. Typically, you have to be ranked in the top 12. Now, I'm not saying that the Cougars can't finish in the top 12 and go to a New Year's Six Bowl. I'm saying that by them sitting there at number 14, that is a huge indictment by the selection committee on their weak strength of schedule. Which a lot of that has to do with COVID cancellations, right? Again, some of that has to do with things that were beyond their control. So Desmond, I saw in your notes, that was your number one takeaway last night. I'll ask it to you very simply. Was what happened to BYU here, was that unfair in your opinion? It was completely unfair. I was stunned by that. There's no way every other poll besides the rankings last night had BYU as a top 10 team. We understand the strength of schedule is weak, but there's nothing they can do. That's outside of their control. Um, that's all COVID related. But when you look at the product on the field and you judge Zach Wilson, you judge that defense, you look at them and how they're beating their team, the average opponent by about 38 points, then you understand this is greater than the team that should be at number 14. And don't forget, Greeny, you have three teams with two losses ahead of them, too. So the um, uh, Mr. Barda, who's the spokesman for the college mm -hmm. football playoff selection committee, had told Reese Davis that they really were impressed with BYU and they watch a lot of film. There's absolutely no way that you can watch BYU play games and think that they deserve to be ranked number 14. That's just that's asinine to me. It makes absolutely no sense. It's Gary Barta, who is the chair of the committee and is also the AD at Iowa. And by the way, their strength of schedule is 81st, but their strength of record is number 10 in the country for whatever that is worth. So that clearly was the one story that got the most attention last night. Paul, what else jumped out to you? What was the next most important thing to you? Well, this was pretty obvious, and it's where the SEC is positioned right now. We know about Alabama, but after that, there's a reasonably good chance a second SEC can get, team can get in. We, we saw that a couple of years ago when Alabama and Georgia met. Nobody really wants to see it. But if Florida beats Alabama in the SEC championship game and everyone else continues to, to win out, then there's a reasonably good chance Florida gets in. Now, if Florida loses, look out. Here comes Texas A&M. Remember, they beat Florida at Kyle Field back in September. They lost to Alabama and Tuscaloosa, but they are positioned to finish in that fourth spot if things go according to plan, which, Greeny, you said they never do. Oh, of course not, but, but the SEC is positioned for that. But, uh, Heather, it feels to me like the ACC may be positioned for that as well, with Notre Dame sitting at two and Clemson at three and the two on a collision course to meet again, having played a game that went into overtime without Trevor Lawrence. If they play another close game and Clemson wins, it certainly feels like there's a path for the ACC to get two in based on where they're sitting now as well. It sure does, especially considering that a one-loss Clemson team got the edge last night over undefeated Ohio State, which is justifiable considering Clemson has a top 10 win now against Miami, and it was a double overtime win in the com er, loss, excuse me, to Notre Dame, and the committee noted that they were down some defensive players and didn't have Trevor Lawrence. So if they split their only losses are to each other, I certainly think that they have a great chance for both of them to finish in the top four. And then, Desmond, we've taken far too much time before talking about what we both know is the most important conference, and that's the Big Ten, where Ohio State sits at number four, <laughs> having played you know, fewer games. Of course, they've only played four games. And Northwestern, everyone knows uh, it's my alma mater, and so I have an affinity. But the reality is they're sitting at number eight. They have a date with Ohio State looming if they are unbeaten going into the championship game. So they, it feels to me, like they control their own destiny. Northwestern wins out. They will be in the college football playoff. Is that right? 
I believe they will be. It depends on, you know, what happens in front of them. But I think that if they win out and they beat Ohio State, I, I don't see any way you can keep um, Northwestern out of the college football playoff. And that's a very likely scenario. Like, people are talking about Alabama and Florida and, no and Notre Dame and Clemson. No one's talking about Ohio State. Like, it's a foregone conclusion that the Buckeyes are just going to just walk into the college football playoff as if no roadblock is in the way. I think the Northwestern um, – Fighting Reese Davises, they may have something to say <laughs> about that. People didn't think they would beat Wisconsin. They manhandled Wisconsin. They played great defense. They got a quarterback who, who plays uh, well in their system named Ramsey. I just think that people aren't really focused on the brand of football right now and the style of football that Northwestern's playing. So they can definitely control their own destiny if they win out. Well, I'm focused on it, and, and, and I will say I totally agree with you. They have beaten two teams that were in the rankings last night. Iowa was in the rankings last night, and so was Wisconsin. They have the date with Ohio State coming up. And for what it's worth, and I circled it on my little sheet, they have the number one strength of record. Northwestern's strength of record, according to these metrics, I don't make them up, is number one in the country. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.